and thanks for joining us. A tentative agreement between the local 966 of the Amalgamated Transit Union and the city was reached in the early hours of this morning. The deal will ensure that all transit services will run on schedule come Monday. Mike Albanese reports. The ATU and the city's negotiating teams have come to terms on a new contract after a marathon session of talks. At 7.45 this morning, after going all night, a tentative deal was reached. Negotiations really started um, um, coming closer um, later Friday night, and as we progressed into early Saturday morning, we felt we were getting closer. And certainly as you get down to the wire, it's, you know, it's the, the things back and forth, but uh, we were pretty confident um, earlier this morning that, that we were going to reach a tentative deal. After going 18 months without a contract, the tentative deal was struck with just less than 48 hours before the union was in a legal strike position. Very good news, we have a tentative deal. Um, we have to bring it to the membership tomorrow, at, uh, like tomorrow as in Sunday, uh, for a one o'clock meeting. And I really encourage all of the membership to show up to hear what, you know, like hear what was actually negotiated and everything so that they know for sure what they're voting on. And we will, we will be ratifying that tomorrow. The deal will be presented to City Council Monday night as well, but so far Cavisto believes things are looking up for the transit workers because the mandates are being met. Smith had similar words. Both sides, I mean, worked very hard in the negotiations and um, certainly, you know, both uh, the union had a mandate and, and City Council provided administration with a mandate, so there were certainly, you know, negotiations back and forth. But yeah, at the end of the day, it was, you know, in the best interest for the, the citizens and the, the users of the, the service to reach a tentative deal. With this tentative deal, riders of public transit could rest assured come Monday they will have buses and transportation to make their way around Thunder Bay. I didn't want somebody not to have a ride. I didn't want the students to be so that they were scrambling to try and get to school or or whatever. So I mean we were, that was in the back of our minds, you know, all along that we didn't want to disrupt the service. And that's not, that wasn't our intent. We, we just wanted to make sure we got something fair. The workers will vote to ratify the contract tomorrow and City Council will be presented with the deal on Monday for their approval. Mike Albanese, TBT News. Thunder Bay Police are requesting public assistance in locating 17-year-old Raina Jonah. She was reported as missing on January 17th and was last seen near the County Fair Walmart store later that evening. Raina is described as being Native Canadian, 5'7 and 140 pounds. Anyone with information regarding the whereabouts of Raina is asked to contact the Thunder Bay Police. The scourge of suicide is something that has impacted all of us in one way or another. It claims an alarming number of lives in Canada, especially among Canada's First Nations people. Kerry Marsden traveled to the Nistantica Reserve and files this report. Charismatic, smart, funny. With a gift for music, that's how the father of Dwayne Monias describes his son. When Dwayne wants to do something, he doesn't give up until he gets it. That's, that's how I knew him. The 29-year-old who was so full of life took his own December 26. I heard the announcement that the emergencies happened in the community that everything is cancelled. And I somehow had a feeling it was my... You know, my son. A vigil to honor his son's life is being held in Toronto, more than 1,800 kilometers from their home on Nishkantiga First Nation. This is my 29 year old son that we lost your suicide. That didn't have to happen. Nishkantiga is a flying community about 500 kilometers northeast of Thunder Bay. Munias, who was chief there, declared a state of emergency last spring when eight youth committed suicide and 20 attempted to take their own lives. The North South Partnership for Children, an organization that works with northern communities, responded by traveling to the community. It responded again by organizing this vigil. So that the community isn't alone and so that we as a greater community of human beings can be more aware of what's happening up north. The Nishkantaga community remains under a state of emergency. Former interim Liberal leader Bob Ray has known Chief Monias in the community for 20 plus years and attended Duane's funeral. He says we have to break down the isolation trapping these communities. To take the steps in terms of education and housing and social services and jobs and opportunity that show that we really are one place, that we're not just going to leave people on the margins. Monias, who also lost a daughter to suicide, says it's important for him to be here to create more awareness. Carrie Marsden, Global News.
emotions were dialed up at a meeting in Dryden Thursday night. It was called to inform the public on a new contract that will move that city's police dispatch calls to Owen Sound. The move is the latest cost-cutting measures for Dryden, whose financial crisis has dominated its headlines over the past year. John Thompson reports. The crowd at the meeting was mostly made up of Dryden Police Service employees. They hurled heated questions at their chief, the police board chair, and the chief of police for Owen Sound, where their dispatch center will be relocated. Cindy Skeen is among more than a dozen dispatch employees who will be laid off as a result of the five-year deal to outsource incoming calls. Me losing my job isn't the big issue here. Like, of course, I'm devastated. I am. Um, I'm a mom. I teach all these guys like my kids. Um, I worry about them. One of the comments that one officer made to me is, um, I told my wife to sue when something happens because something's going to happen. That scares me. Ann Tachik represents the Dryden Police Association. She says she's standing with her members who are losing their jobs and is calling for a meeting with the police board to ensure officers understand the impact of the changes. It's how are we going to conduct business and how are we going to be held accountable to the community and um, am I going to be safe and if I'm not safe neither is the community. Police board chair Peter Andrusko expected the emotional response. He says the dispatch center lost over $700,000 in 2013. With equipment purchased in the 1980s, Dryden's comm center can no longer attract the contracts it had at its peak in 2007. And with a structural deficit of $3 million, Andrusco says the municipality is in no financial state to fund upgrades. Revenue to the call center has dropped dramatically in the last uh, five or six years. And uh, our, the staffing at the comm center has remained the same. And so the cost just, uh, uh, the deficit uh, in the comm center has become, um, we can no longer ignore it. The Ontario Civilian Police Commission still has to approve the deal in February, but by law, the contract had to be signed prior to public consultation. Officers in attendance didn't dispute the savings to the city, only that the board tied the police into the Owen Sound contract before its officers were brought into the loop. John Thompson, TBD News. It's a five-kilometer run unlike any other. Dirty Girls Thunder Bay has announced they are hosting a second event that promises to be even better than last year. The course and obstacles are designed by the Lake Superior Scottish Regiment. It isn't a timed run, however, it is a chance to have fun with your friends and help raise funds for the Canadian Cancer Society. Although this is a ladies-only event, anyone is able to come out and watch and, of course, a cheer on your runner. The event is scheduled to take place August 9th. Charlotte Brown, director of Keynote Events, says it's a chance to have a great time with your friends while getting in a fun workout. And this year we, we uh, change it that it's 100% just for fun. I mean, the course was the same whether it was competitive or just for fun last year, but the only difference was the timing. And if people really want to time it, they can time it themselves. But it's all about um, doing an amazing event for, for the Canadian Cancer Society and getting your girlfriends out and um, putting your team together, team costumes, team names, like some of the craziest names you ever heard of, and so much fun. Admission to watch the event is $10 per vehicle at the gate. For more information, registration forms or training tips, visit dirtygirlstbay.com. It's a donation that aims to support kids in our community and teaches them the basics when it comes to whipping up a tasty meal. Peter Rorig is the president of the local Kiwanis Club. He says over the past year they've been doing whatever they can to help raise funds for our kids count. Two checks were presented totaling close to almost $8,000. He says it's a great feeling to give back to the community. Writing this check, uh, it, it's a really a good feeling. It gives me uh, a chance in Qantas Club to give back to the community. Um, you know, I mean, we go through our lives and, uh, you know, a, a lot of these organizations um, are behind the scenes and uh, we never hear about them. And so, uh, for me, uh, the reason why I joined Qantas is, is to give back to the community. The money raised came from a variety of fundraisers held by the Kiwanis Club, such as the Heimer's Fair and the Motorcycle 